It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour. A cocktail fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street. Wayfair is a restaurant and a bar where they serve handcrafted food and spirits and they put fine dining into a sandwich. They have a, also have a happy hour here for three hours every day from four to seven. If you haven't been down here, come check them out. They're Wayfair on Ferret Street and we have to be especially nice about Wayfair today because one of our guests on our show owns it. Donnie Rose is with the co-owner of Wayfair. Donnie, welcome to Happy Hour. Thank you, Grant. You're welcome. It's good to see you after. I've seen you every day here for how long we've been doing this show, 15 years. Yes, sir. And uh, this is the first time I've actually got to have a conversation with you. It's nice. I didn't even know you were a guy. I thought, I thought you were a woman. That's the strange one. I'm usually in the window expediting the food every day. That's what it is. Expediting the food. That's an interesting term. What does that mean? Well, handing it out. My best guess is trying to get it out as efficiently as possible. Right. If the, the true definition of it. Expediting. Expediting. Okay, Abby Mannix is here as well, spelled M A N N I X. That's right. Correct. A B B Y Mannix. Abby is a comedian who does sketch and improv comedy. While this is, this is what you said yourself quote, free range raising four weird children. Yes. Did you have to adopt four weird children? To no, they just grew that way. You gave birth to four weird children. Yes, I did. What's the common denominator there? Your husband is weird. Um, I suppose so. It's the mixture. Really? Yeah. What does he do? He's not an improv comedian as well? No, he is a structural engineer. So someone's got a real job, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What makes the children weird? Um, I would say just an unusual viewpoint, you know. Um, no, no idea. <laughs> How, how old are they? I have a 10-year-old, a 7-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 2-year-old. Wow. So that's, yeah. you started pretty early then. Yes, I did. You don't look that old. No, um, I had my first, uh, I got pregnant with my first right after college. So, okay. Yeah. Um, Was it intentional? Semi. <laughs> semi <laughs> Not really. What does that mean? The well, sex was intentional, but... Yeah. <laughs> Conception I, wasn't. Yeah, I was I was in law school and I was engaged and um, I was sort of uh, having a I guess quarter life crisis. Like, do I really want to be here? Ah, you know. And then, uh, lo and behold, uh, Eli happened. So Eli's, <laughs> Eli's coming. Yeah, exactly. Do Donnie, you went to law school here too, right? I did. I graduated from Loyola in two thousand and four. And when did you graduate? Oh, you didn't. Uh, I you, dropped out. You uh, got knocked it, up. It was in Seattle. In Seattle. Understandable. Yeah. Very understandable. Do you think getting yeah. knocked up was a psychological way for you to get out of law school? I think so, yes. That was it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're being honest. So you willed yourself to get pregnant? Yeah. Well, Me good. Mentally. What, so you went to law school in Seattle? Mm hmm. University of Washington. You're not from Washington. Seattle? No, um, I'm from Philadelphia originally. Really? What made you go to Seattle law school? Uh, my husband is from Oregon. So he had friends in Seattle, and he was going to graduate school there, too. Okay. So, yeah. So you were serious. You got really serious early, then, except for everything. Yeah, I did. Except for your career, just about yeah. your personal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How did you meet the structural engineer? Uh, it was our first week of uh, orientation at Tulane. Oh, my God, really? Yeah. So mm -hmm. hang on, I'm as confused as all fuck. Now, what, you came down to Tulane right. first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you met the structural engineer yes. at Tulane, mm -hmm. and you got a undergraduate degree there yes okay what in psychology so nothing basically <laughs> <laughs> you know did you end up owing them like sixty thousand dollars or whatever more no comment <laughs> yes yeah. so how much does it cost you which what do you go to loyola did you say don i right? went to loyola um the good thing about being older is i only owe twenty thousand from college but i still owe 110 from law school wow. jesus christ yeah you actually still owe it today, to this today, very day. You, you pay it much like a mortgage. You pay it over 30 years. They give you a good finance rate. So, it, it, of course, if you have a million dollars, pay it off. But if not, it behooves you to pay it over time. Uh, right. But what ends up happening is you owe thirty or 40000 a year for three years. And you end up owing 100000 really? So, wow. So, how much do you pay a month right now? Realistically, it, it fluctuates, but I probably pay six or 700 a month. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Well, what are you paying? Are you paying about the same? Is this what everyone pays in America? I mean, I dropped out after six weeks, so... No, but you're still paying for your undergraduate. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a few hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're still paying it. 
Don, how long have you been an attorney now? I'm I've been an attorney for 11 years. So if you look at the 16000 or so I owe from college, I'm 39. So that's 17 years ago. I'm, I'm still paying on that just based on what they tell you to pay each month because it's 30 years. And then the uh, law school loan, I probably don't still owe 110. I might owe 90, 95, 100. You pay interest up front just like on a home. It's exactly like a mortgage. It's, it's so just like a mortgage, just a very, very long term loan. So you're paying off the, how does that work? You pay off the interest first and then the principal? Or the something? interest and then the principal, and you just hope you get an interest rate like 2% or 1% or 0.5%. You hope the government's happy or the way the world is at the time just works in your advantage. When you go to buy a house or something and you owe $110,000, does that count against you? It does as show qualifying up. for a mortgage? It, it does show up on all of that. Uh, I guess the understanding is that it is a, such a low percentage and that you are paying it over time. I, they do consider it, though. It's just right. anytime you borrow money, they look at everything that, that you have, debt, secured, unsecured. But the good news is that you're an attorney. What is that, $350 an hour or something? <laughs> there are probably some people that charge that much. We, um, we try to charge a little bit less than that, try right. to be affordable. What sort of law do you practice? Uh, initially, uh, coming out of law school, I worked for Morris Bart, uh, local. Oh, wow. <laughs> One call, it's that's a, all. Yeah, it's okay, in, now we're, we're on to a good subject, I think. You know, you know. and it's, uh, <laughs> I will say this, he, he is a pioneer in what he does. You know, he gets, you get a bum rap for being a lawyer, you get a bum rap for being a personal injury attorney, and he's the quintessential one. Um, he definitely was a pioneer in a lot of what he did in the advertising, yeah. the brilliant part of that. The law side is different, but you can be a, a brilliant in that in, in the marketing aspect or, the, or that aspect and then let the lawyers do the rest. I, I have a question about Morris Bart. Does he have clones? Because he's everywhere. He, you, just, you just see him everywhere. I see him at Audubon Park. I see him at the gym. We went to Florida a few weeks ago, and he was on the beach in Florida. He is everywhere. <laughs> he is, he's everywhere, and he's been there for so long. He's been out of school his law class, I forget some of the attorneys that graduated with him, but they are people that, have, that are in the, you know, in the public, in the government, and they've been around for a long time. You forget how long he's been doing this, but he's really been, and I don't know how long he has, but it's been quite a number of years. What, does he have plastic surgery or something to keep looking? Because yeah. I only see him on the billboard. I don't see him anywhere. You must go to places where Morris Bart goes. Where do you go? Well, Florida. Where else do you see him? At the gym. Yeah. He, Which gym does he go to? At the JCC. The JCC, I think, okay. I think he funds it because there's some uh, Bart, like, <laughs> film series I saw that on outside there. on the billboard too that says yeah. the Bart family film series yeah um, that's him mm -hmm. okay well that's very nice so he's a Jewish attorney with a giant face on a billboard if you're listening to the show and you don't live in New Orleans and you don't know who the hell we're talking about this guy is in a he's a uh, what's it called personal injury per attorney personal injury attorney and his, he has giant billboards and his, he used to be on the back of the phone book when there was a phone book mm -hmm. and he has ads all over the place and on TV with the his the catchphrase used to be the slogan used to be one, one call, call that's, that's all, all. Mm -hmm. and now I see it's one click that's it Ugh. he's catching up you don't like don't that like as much that. no what else could you do though do you want to you know you want to be online now you want to be able to say well I want to go online and click on Morris. We do. We try to have Facebook. We try to have a website that's interactive. As an attorney, um, the only thing you can do is help people that come to you and you have to get them to come to you. That, and, and I'm sure that's for plumbers, electricians, any job where you have a trade, you have a craft and you need someone that needs your services, uh, you have to hope that they get there. And so it's uh, if the internet's the way to get to people, that's the way to, to do it. If it's the back right. of the phone book. So you can somewhat see the trends in advertising when you see what Morris Bart does because he's brilliant at it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see him <clears throat> Excuse me, on right. the back of a phone book, it must mean that the, the not as many people are getting a phone book anymore or using the well, phone no book. Well, no one so. gets the phone I mean, I don't even know if there is a phone book My 85-year-old grandmother asked me if she lives on the North Shore, and she said, if you get a New Orleans phone book, can you get it for me so that she can find her <laughs> friends in New Orleans? Because they all right. still use the phone book because they're in their 80s. Other yeah. than that, nobody uses the phone book. Well, I guess that's who's still got a landline as people <laughs> in, their, in their 80s. I, I'm going to admit, I'm, oh, like I said, I'll be 40 but next year. I did just disconnect my landline recently. You did? There you go. I do you have a landline, Abby? I do for now, but we're about to move, so I, I think uh, we might not have one after that. Look who's here, everybody. The Unnaturals are here. Great. Come on over. They look good. It's Hey, come in, you guys. How's it going? Kevin? Yes. Hey, I'm Grant. How's it going? This is Abby. Hello. This is Kevin from The Unnaturals. Nice. This is Donnie. Who, pull up a chair. Oh, cool, cool. And, and this is Jen Hi. from The Unnaturals as well. Hey, guys. Pull up a chair. Jen, this is Abby. Hi. Hello. And this is Donnie. So put on a pair of headphones. And hopefully that's the right volume for you. This is <laughs> Lana Caruso, correct? Yeah, that's right. Pull up a chair here, Lana. Okay. So tell us about the dog. What happened? Well, the, the dog uh, has been sick for a couple of days, and uh, I took him to the vet, and he's going to be fine. So. Yay. Okay. What <laughs> he was just needs some medicine. What was wrong with him? 
Some sort of a dog stomach virus. Dog uh, stomach virus. Something okay. Like that, yeah. All right. Okay. So, so you play drums, right? You're the That's drummer. Right. I'm the drummer. You're the drummer, and Jen, you're the bass player. Yes. So, and um, Kevin's the guitarist. Yes. So, how are we going to do this today? We're going to sit up and play a whole. I the brought whole bongo thing. drums to play. Bongos are good. Okay. Yeah. And what have you guys got? We've got little practice amps. Okay. Let's get those set up. Yeah, he's okay. going to get everything. Okay. Let's take a let's take a break here. Okay, so you guys, let's uh, let's take a listen to something. First of all, tell us a little bit about how you got to be a surf punk, jazz, metal, swing, rockabilly band. Oh. Jan, you want to take that oh, one? That's a good one, Jan. Well, uh, actually, uh, met Kevin uh, several years back, I guess about 2006, and he was playing in a band called Rolling for the Honey, but he wanted to do a side project that was a little bit more rockabilly and surf, and we were both getting, uh, he was getting me into surf music at the time. And I was learning how to play bass at the time, so he started throwing some bass lines at me for some songs he had written, and we formed a band. I had a, a gig booked for my birthday, and happy birthday, by the way. When is it? it well, this was uh, it, was, it was August twentieth, and okay. like bands canceled, so we decided to turn turn it into a real band. We went and got a drummer and uh, and a percussionist. And how did you find you, you found Lana then straight away? No, she's our, she's our third drummer. The third drummer. We're it's like, like the Spinal Tap. Of yeah. Surf rock, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this is your first bass gig then in a band? Yes, yes. I, I've played in a couple other bands since, but this is this is my baby. This is my this is it. How tall are you? <laughs> I am five foot two and a half. And a half. And, and a half. And how long? How tall is this bass? It's not much. It's not much different, right? It's almost her wingspan. Yeah, <laughs> it's about the same. Isn't it about the same length as you are tall? It looks like it. It's probably it might be. She it's can like handle a it. She's a big girl. Yeah, it's a huge instrument. Okay, so what do you want to play today? Uh, Let's start with Dead Man's Hand. Okay, we're gonna do Dead Man's Hand. Okay, is it an original? Yes. Very nice. Okay. What did you think of that, Donnie? 
I would not have known what genre of music that was if you didn't tell me, but I loved it. It was yeah. great. Yeah. I liked it a lot. It sure was. What do you think, Abby? Really cool. Nice, right? Enjoyed it, yeah. So, okay, so listen, come in here, Lana, because I have a question for you. A lot of questions for you after watching that. <laughs> She was amazing on the bongos. Thank you. Yeah, so pull, pull your chair in here. I only did that yesterday. We did that song for the first time like that. And I'm really yeah. pleased with the way that came yeah. out. It was great. You're, you're, not job, really, you're really like a Thank you. Re- regular drummer, not a regular not yeah, really I'm, bongo. I'm, I'm like a rock and roll, heavy metal type of right. surf, surf punk drummer. Right, but so I'm not much of a percussionist, so... Uh, well, you're, yeah, that was great. you're a fascinating looking Thank bongo you. player because I know you're short too. How tall are you? I'm five foot tall and about 90 pounds soaking wet. You're wow. five <laughs> foot <laughs> even. Yeah, that's it. Wow. And you're 90 pounds. You're skinny as hell. Hey, man. And you've got these muscular arms with these little black bra straps hanging <laughs> down right. while you're yeah, playing they're, the they're bongo. That's a great <laughs> look. Yeah. Thank what, you. What do you do normally when you're not playing drums? Well, I, I work in a, a welding shop as a finish like I do finish work, I do like grinding, sanding, and, and painting on iron furniture. An iron furniture? Yeah. Or like I'm, wrought I'm, iron furniture? Yeah, I'm lucky enough to be self-employed and work with my boyfriend to, to do that. And um, That's cool. That gives me time to come and play with these guys, you know, yeah. in the evenings and on the weekends. So it, it works out for me. What's, I the like na- it. what's the name of your company? Well, this it's just like a little welding shop. We work like with interior decorators and stuff. We make ornamental iron furniture. This is here in New Orleans? Well... It's across a lake in, in Mandeville. We work, oh, okay. but we have a lot of customers uptown, um, so we, we do a lot of work over here. Well, how do they find you? Uh, John Whitfield, Custom Iron Work by John Whitfield. John Whitfield, Custom Iron Work. Okay. Just remember that, Donnie. Do you have any custom iron furniture at your house? I'm thinking now. I don't think I have any custom iron furniture, but I've looked at You need at a, some? I don't. <laughs> I was thinking about the welding part. I do need a, a rack built for the keg system. I need something to hold over the here, kegs. At the, over at, here. At Wayfair. At Wayfair. So, so you guys... Donnie owns Wayfair, because I know you walked in here late. This is his restaurant. Okay. So you could get yourself a job, nice Lana. Nice to meet you. Making a what? And I, could, I could do iron work, but I don't work in a restaurant no more. We, uh, I used to work in the kitchen years ago. I know. Did you? you? She knows what it's like then. We, uh, we, we put 30 draft. We have 30 draft beers here, and that was something that came after the restaurant opened. And in doing so, there's actually behind the wine rack, there's a uh, kegerator, a giant walk-in keg room, and we hold 30 kegs in there. And it's nice to have some backups yeah. so that you have a cold beer right, ready for right. the next person. Uh, but you need to be, have a way to stack them up. And I've always tried to see if I could find someone with metalwork who could build. Lana, are you paying attention here? I'm paying attention. I'll give you a look. I'll give you a look. See what you get. See what okay. you get an idea. That sounds like a pretty interesting job because you built this thing without it's, you, well, thinking ahead. You build a cooler, and it's the same cooler that where all the food yeah. store. It's just a cooler, uh, but it's a way to store kegs. It's, you just need to have them at temperature. Craft beer should be 36, 37, 38 degrees. It's got the temperature, but that many kegs jammed in a room. We don't have a way. I need to have 30 plus, maybe 10 backups, 40 kegs, and it's just there's just not enough space. Wow. So what are you going to do? Uh, it, it worked out so far. What I do is by staying on top of it, if you f- check the kegs and you figure out which ones are low, I can put up to maybe 8 or 10 extra kegs in there, How uh, can but you maybe tell, I can put 20. Is there like a some like a readout on you those wish. kegs? You, can no. tell, you can't tell when they're empty. It's, it's, it's old world. Mm. It's a giant aluminum keg, and you better be able to feel that weight of it and know what the weight of an empty keg is and gauge how much is in it. And if you do it enough, you kind of know. Mm-hmm. I can tell when there's about five or ten beers left in it. So you have to pick, <laughs> really? Yeah, really? you got to go pick them all up. Oh, yeah, you can tell. You just you pick up enough kegs, you know the, the weight of the empty keg. Well, that's a pretty good skill to have. I guess. I picked up a lot of skills here. I guess they're good skills. Yeah. Well, you started out as a lawyer. You didn't know anything about owning restaurants. I, I didn't. Uh, the quick story is I, I, I'm a lawyer, uh, but I did meet when I graduated college and I moved back from Arkansas to New Orleans. I had the fortune of uh, having a friend graduate from college by a bar. It was Jimmy's Music Club uh, at the time. and, and it was On a, Oak Street. On Oak Street. Um, and I don't know the history of it, but my understanding is that it was a place where bands went, smaller bands, before the Tipitinas, before the House of Blues. And uh, I found that out when he opened it up. We found a cooler with all the cool band stickers on it, hundreds of them, bands I'd never seen before. So Jimmy's was like an old punk rock club. See, they know about yeah. it. And it's yeah. from the '90s. It was great. It was. It was yeah. in the you '90s. You didn't go there. I didn't you go were there. Too young I didn't move. Well, I'm, I'm 39, but I didn't move back till 2000. So when well, we moved Jimmy's back, Jimmy's was gone. Was gone in, by 2000. Because the Tipitinas and the House of Blues and, and the musical venues had taken the bigger ones had taken. I think over. it was Jimmy's before um, the '90s. I think it was They're going back. They? Yeah. Well, I, I know yeah. that I, for a long time. I know the gentleman that owns Beaver Productions is a pretty big production company. He came in one time and he said, "I met my wife here." So it, I think it was there, maybe in the '80s. I don't know. I really don't. I know Jimmy Ensemble owned the building. He ran it that way. Right? Is it Joe from Beaver or Barry from it was, Beaver? It, it, I think it was Joe. I think it Joe was from Joe. Beaver is a, a friend of mine on Facebook. This was a long time mm-hmm. ago. Um, He's a real right wing. 
crazy ass. Well, you're talking. I'm a hater. <laughs> you're talking. You're talking from 2000, Fine. 15 yeah. years ago. 15 years ago. He's. He's he came, I he didn't came know came anything about his politics then. I know that <laughs> he's since revealed himself. I hope he's listening. <laughs> Giving that, him a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Facebook is for. Isn't that really right? Humiliating yourself politically, publicly. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I find that Facebook makes me find out about things. People who I thought were cool, I've discovered are not cool <laughs> at, yeah. at all. Yeah. You have that experience, Abby? Have you? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I always knew they weren't cool. Oh, really? It, it just I'm proves more, it. Uh, <laughs> well, vice versa, too. It'd be like you could have, uh, you could have a Facebook friend that you really enjoy hanging out with but then you get on Facebook with them and they post everything every thought that passes through their brain uh, they, they post every funny picture that they see and they they have really strange opinions about a lot of things right that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying they need to come off like, your feed let's just, let's just <laughs> go to a show and have a beer let's, <laughs> let's just get off let's just get well, off what is it about that what is it about Facebook that makes you hate people that you otherwise would like I mean <laughs> It's kind of the thing where you're hiding behind something, so it's it's easy for people to put things out there that they wouldn't normally put out there. I and find it, it's easier for people, likewise, to pass judgment because they don't have any repercussions. Okay, well put. I, I find that you have to think before you put on something on Facebook. Do I want the person that I hated the most in high school to read this? You know, <laughs> that's a good, what, that's what a is good this, standard. Yeah. What is Lori Cohn going to think about it, Lori? You suck. <laughs> Lori Cohn was the person she you must have been mean to you in high school. <laughs> what, nah, what, nah, what high school did you and Lori go to? Oh, uh, well, it was Upper Dublin in uh, suburban <laughs> Philadelphia. So. Well, upper Dublin? Yeah. Upper Dublin. Is, that, is there a Lower Dublin or a Dublin? There was no Lower Dublin. Middle, there were Upper Dublin. and Lower Gwynnids and Upper and Lower Moorlands, but no Lower Dublin. So I, I think it was, it was swallowed by the earth. It was an abomination. Upper Dublin. Know. And what was your name? Abby what Cohen? No, Lori Cohen. Lori, yeah. sorry, shit, your name's no. Abby. Lori Cohen. What did she look like? A pear with a <laughs> phallic head and weird, wow. like, wow. wet I just got the image instantly, a pear with a, a phallic a head. A a phallic I did, head. too. That's yeah. brutal. Yeah. Man. No. I mean, I, I didn't hate her, but I know she yeah, somebody, hated me. She, so oh, she it's hated the, you. It's the bad vibes. It's like, do you want the people who are going to project the... Hatred onto you to what read she, what you're about what to. What did you do to her that made her hate you? Um, I guess just call her out on her BS. You know, she just she came to our school late and um tried to say she was a member of this weird suicide gang in her old, old school. <laughs> it, it was it was bizarre. I don't know. I yeah. What happens if you're a member of a suicide gang? Are I you, don't. I don't even know. Is it called ISIS? It's not very long lived. Yes, that's that's right. Right. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! There used to be oh. twenty of us. Yeah. It was, <laughs> I don't know no, what happened to all the other guys in the suicide game. It, well, it was just bizarre. I don't know. The craft was popular back then, so it just oh my, that, yeah, I didn't. Oh my, it, yeah. the, the I was craft. also in was high school in the nineties. Yeah. A, yeah. a witch Some, movie. I, th- I, I could be wrong. I, like witchcraft. I just don't I give a damn what, what none of them people think. I didn't care then, and I sure don't care now. What school did you go to, Atlanta? I, I I graduated from Salmon in Slidell, Louisiana. Salmon right Slidell, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. We was the state champions that year, and I was in the marching band, so we got to. Do our little halftime show in the Superdome. That was, wow, that was pretty cool. cool. Were you a drummer in the? Yeah, I was there? a snare drummer. There's a lot of competition. Uh, I now. played the drums since I was 14. I was about to say you've been doing it for a long time. Very talented. Yeah. Thank you. Who wow. did you learn? Did you learn at school first, at Salmon? Well, I, I kind of like I, I kind of started just playing with this other guy um, that was kind of close to age, my age, and we were like the only kids in the 90s that really liked Kiss a lot, and he <laughs> played the guitar and I played the drums, so we uh became like a little band you know yeah and uh we would play kids songs and stuff like that and then i became in high school and uh the band teacher uh knew that i played the drums because i had some friends that played the horns in march band and they say we know somebody that's a good drummer and he said well go get her <laughs> so i learned over the summer before the next school year started you know all the different things that the drummers had to know and I, I was just really good at the snare drum, and uh, I really lo- enjoyed that. It's one of the best times of my life. All right. There's a lot of uh, competition in Slidell between Selman and Slidell High. Yeah, that that um, was really more about the football players. It was the kids and the, the kids in the band. The band we all got back. along. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I guess the football players. You know, they're just teenage boys, and they're just all mad anyway. So. <laughs> Jen, are you from around here? Yeah. Well. 
I grew up in Belchase, then I lived in St. Bernard, then I lived in Chalmette, then I lived in Slidell, then I lived in Baton Rouge, then I lived back in New Orleans, then I lived back in Slidell. I then also Picayune, lived in a lot of New these Orleans. places she just said. Yeah. What, what <laughs> were you doing? Going to circle around the lake. Yeah. What were you doing moving around the lake like that? Uh, my dad getting transferred, and then he when he had a retirement, early retirement, and then what did he do after that? I don't remember. Oh, he did lots of different. Well. I mean, do you really want to know the story? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Because basically, that was it. He got transferred at one point. He got transferred at one point, and then he got forced into early retirement. And so then he had a property in Chalmette that he was going to have uh, his dad live on one side and his sister live on the other side. So we wound up living on one side. How many sides were there? Two. It was a duplex. And then, uh, so which and side it was did right you live in? You live with the dad <laughs> or with the sister? Oh, well, no, that was the thing. Like, well, that was the original plan, but then he got forced in early retirement, so his sister was kind of like, uh, <laughs> go find your own place, man. <laughs> but so we, uh, th- he had a property in Slidell, and so they were building the house in the meantime, and once that was done, then that's how we wound up going to Slidell, and it was time for me to go to college. So that's how I wound up in Baton Rouge. Well, then I decided that partying was way more fun, so that's how I wound up having to live back with mom and dad. <laughs> and then that's how I wound up back in New Orleans because that wasn't too much fun either. So. Okay, that's a pretty good story. <laughs> very nice. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey, Abby. Yes. Who w- says you're a sketch and improv comedian? That's right. Who with? Oh, cool. Um, I play at La Nuit on Ferret, just up the street. Right. Yeah. You have the same color shirt on as the building. I see purple. Yeah, I, I try to match You've my always surroundings. R- right. Okay. It's like a chameleon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What that's K B purple. Yeah. That is K and B purple. What goes What's on? K and B, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you must not be from here. Oh yeah, I'm you're not. from Philadelphia. I, I'm oh. sorry. It's an old drugstore. Very yeah. famous oh, okay. New Orleans. And drug everything store. was was purple. It's K and B. K and B. That's oh, right. I'm sorry, I think I they're all Rite that. Aids now. <laughs> yeah, that was C V S maybe? No. What was that? There was there was two old drugstores, K and B and Rexall. Rite Aid took those and in the, in the 90s. CVS took Eckerd's or something? Oh, Eckerd's was yeah. it, all, it all happened in the, the late 90s. The K&B, <laughs> K&B turned over, uh, sold out to one of them big right. drug stores, you know? It's like yeah. Discount Zone bought out Time Saver. It's like like Swagman's ain't, ain't, ain't there no more. No it seemed like they were Swagman's is no gone Swagman's. too. Ain't Swagman's. there no yeah. more. <laughs> these are all, ain't there no more. These are all <laughs> places that we hit. What, when did you get here, Abby? Uh, 2000. 2000. Uh-huh. Well, that's a long time ago now, but yeah. I guess this was even longer than that. Yeah. So how did you get to be a comedian? What happened? How did you get from um, dropping out of law school and getting knocked <laughs> up? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, and then I, I guess I, I should have always been in the scene, I guess. You know, I, I just wanted to express myself creatively. And, um, you know, I, I've always been funny. My uncle, actually. I've uh, always been funny. <laughs> Yes, That's pretty I'm, good. I'm hilarious, but uh, <laughs> my my uncle was a writer for uh, several comedy shows in the '90s. And, Which ones? Uh, well, most celebratedly Seinfeld. He wrote. Your for. Uncle That's wrote my for favorite Seinfeld. one. I watch yeah. that every night. It's pretty impressive. Holy yeah. hell! It sure is, isn't it? That's funny as hell. That's a good show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he Which one did he write? Everybody knows every episode. Um. Well. Um. The one that he's most well known for is the opposite, where George realizes that um, everything, every instinct he's ever had is wrong. <laughs> so he does the opposite, the opposite, and that's how he got the job with the Yankees. With the Yankees, oh, that's yeah. right. Wow, that was a seminal... That's crazy. He wrote, yeah. the, he wrote the season finale. That's impressive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and his, his voice was actually... He does um, like voiceover work and like Frank Sinatra impersonations, <laughs> and his voice was in one episode. Do you remember the episode where uh, Elaine's boss wants to win the contest to hold the Woody Woodpecker balloon? Yes. Yeah. And there's that radio contest. That's my uncle on the radio. Okay. So, yeah. So Very awesome. cool. Yeah. So how's he your uncle? Is he your father's brother? It's my mother's or mo- twin brother. Wow. Your mother's twin brother. Yeah. Wow. So. Are they ident- No, they're not identical twins. <laughs> what a ridiculous <laughs> question. Yeah. What does you What does your mom do then? Is she funny? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's funny, but sh- she doesn't do much. I don't know. So you got the genes the yeah. somehow. They got the funny genes I guess along so, with your uncle. I, I guess I would have pursued it sooner, but my family always viewed him as like this huge failure. 
because he what? wasn't like a millionaire or whatever, you know, because uh, I'm Jewish, so all of my... Was Lori Cohn was Jewish? Yeah, well, I come from a very Jewish part of the country, and... Uh, Philadelphia is a Jewish part of the country, I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, especially like the suburbs. Oh, know? really? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, the, the whole Northeast, really, and... Um, <laughs> Yeah, he. So what he is it? What's that got to do with it? Are you supposed to be super wealthy just because you're Jewish? Basically, I mean, like all, all my grandmother's contemporaries' I be kids. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you want to be Jewish? No, I want to be wealthy. Yeah. Well, that, can you? You could convert to Judaism. Yeah. We could convert you here if you like. No. Oh, yeah. You, we ain't gonna throw no money at you for it, though. <laughs> do you have the power to convert people? I have the Abby? kit in my bag. You got it. Yeah. You know. What do you need? <laughs> Circumcision. A, a bottle oh, of Manischewitz. Oh, no. <laughs> bottle of Manischewitz. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's I it. Oh, I posted something about that earlier today. Yeah. You did? I How come? Well, that was the thing. When uh, when I was little, my dad would give me uh, Manischewitz and, a, and like um, a the little Why? brandy glass, like Why? with dinner when they were having who would wine even, with who dinner. Who would buy Manischewitz? Oh, can we say fuck? Yes. Oh, okay. Did I, I say that. it? No, he did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Grant oh, okay. says it a lot. Yeah. Why would somebody buy Manischewitz? It's the horriblest wine out there. Know. Why would you? Because that was what not my Jewish, mom liked. Right? She liked sub, she liked uh, really sweet wines. It's like melted jelly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It is. It's yeah. grape jelly melted and spiked. Fortified. Yes. Okay. And so uh, nobody's so Jewish. No one's Jewish in your family, though, right? They act. They act like it. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? Apart from being super wealthy screenwriters. No. Um, but no, say, uh, so like, so I would feel like I was fitting in a dinner with a glass of wine, so I had my little miniature one that, with them, but it was Manischewitz, and I... That's what started you down the path to this dissolute life of partying and dropping so. out of school and I becoming believe, a bass player in a surf It's all the fault of Manischewitz. At least she's good so. at playing the bass, though. She is a great Aww, bass player. Yeah, great. you guys are all great. I would blame the Jews for that. Uh, <laughs> Who can you sue? Anybody, Abby? I, I lost it. Well, if you're going to sue that somebody, you want to... Yeah. Well, Donnie, oh, Bart. Donnie's attorney, he's attorney. Can you oh, sue, cool. Could you sue the Jews in general? I don't think you could sue religion? the entire race. You couldn't. It would be tough. Hmm. hmm. It would be tough. You'd have a tough time getting jurisdiction. <laughs> uh, okay, what about the manufacturer of ma- Jewish... <laughs> <laughs> What about the manufacturer of Manischewitz? <laughs> who, who would we that be? We definitely sue them. We just have to find out where, if that company still exists and where they are. Of course, of course it still exists. exists. I don't even know what y'all, I don't know what y'all are talking about. Oh I don't either. Uh, I didn't want to be the only one to yeah. say it. Okay. You've never been down Abby. the ethnic aisle of the grocery store? I've been down and all aisles. And they got all those uh, boxes of matzo ball soup mix. And then they yeah. got the, I'm, it's they the got wine. A, they got a whole section of a whole aisle. Yeah. I just never yeah. noticed the Manischewitz. I, I know the, uh, the matzo ball soup. We've had that here before. But I don't the know ma- the Manischewitz. Really? Manischewitz is the shittiest wine, <laughs> literally, on Earth. On Earth. And mm-hmm. it's made in Israel, I think, and it's it's kosher. So you're allowed to drink it, you know, have it for Passover. Wine. Okay. And it, somehow it's spread out from from serious Jewish Passover kosher people to the rest of the world. Why anybody would buy that off a shelf <laughs> is beyond... Wait right till you taste it. We I'm should go. We should send to. someone out to it's, go get some. It's, it's especially puzzling this. because my dad wound up being a wine connoisseur later on. So I don't know how he started there. That is especially <laughs> puzzling. From the bottom to the top. Yeah. Yeah. That exactly, yeah. It's very especially puzzling. Hey, um, listen, you guys, can you play some music behind me while I read these commercials? What do you uh, think? Yeah, I got to get the well, ball we can music maybe, again. Maybe just Kevin could do it for now, and then we'll play another song in a minute. Okay. Okay, okay yeah. and I'm going to read these commercials, and then we're going to come back. And well, Should we do another song, you think? We, we have another one. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, Kevin, can you right. just play something sort of groovy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's perfect, something like that, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thanks to these people who have helped make our show possible today. Brought to us by Petite Pet Care. If you're going out of town, you've got a crazy schedule. The folks at Petite Pet Care are going to take care of your pet. Lana, pay attention. This is someone who can take care of your pet, the sick dog. I love that dog. You don't have to take your dog to the boarding or to the to stay over at the vet. <laughs> these guys are going to come to your house, walk your dog, feed it, and give it loving care while you're not there. Well, that, that, that's something I could use. I know. It's Petite Pet Care. He's go a petite, petite pet. Go to Petite. How, pet. What, how? He is Petite. Yeah, it's Petite. Oh, and he's got a stomach blockage or something? He's a virus? No, he just, he just is having a little upset stomach. What he's all he, right now, though. What did he, he's all right now. Okay, well, he, while he's at home recovering, call Petite Pet Care. You can find them at PetitePetCare.com. Now, what kind of lingerie are you wearing? What's that bra you've got on? <laughs> One from the Target. From Target. Target. Because if you want to buy a new bra, you can go to Basics Swim and Gym, a full range of basics of swimsuit. What are you getting a call? No, I ain't getting no call. You can answer it. It's all right. (laughs) It's fine. 
Basic Swimmer Gym sell a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout and yoga clothes and they're right across the street from Basics Lingerie where you could go and check out a new bra. What size are you? Very, very small. Because they do professional bra fitting over there. The all new Basic uh-huh. Swim and Gym and Basics well, we're the Lingerie. the smallest one they make. That's my size. Is that right? <laughs> they're on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Also, thanks to Hangover Destroyer, the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. If you go to the Hangover Destroyer website, yeah. it's called H-Destroyer. This is more... Why don't you talk to Jan about that one? Jan, it's all right. got to get on it. Go to hdestroyer.com. If you write happy hour in the coupon code, they'll give you 30% off of Hangover Destroyer. And you too can seize the dawn. Thanks too to EnlistedNola.com, the revolutionary new way to buy a house in New Orleans. If you know what you're looking for, you can find your perfect match before it comes on the market. It's the match.com of real estate. Nice. It's EnlistedNola.com, and that's all I've got to say about that right now. Thank you very much for playing that in the background. Kevin Bowles, the fabulous guitar player. Kevin, from smoking the balls. Unnatural smoking balls. That's a great... Balls, no, balls. That's balls. funny, balls. smoking balls. Do you guys smoke uh-huh. a lot of weed in the... Uh, in the surf punk world, I plead Lana, the fifth. you do not. <laughs> you can tell the truth because there's n- there's no no law enforcement people listen to the show. No, don't say anything. You do smoke a lot of weed. We all smoke. No, a lot no, of I don't. T- I, I don't. I don't talk about that. Okay, all right. Well, what's the drug of choice in the surf punk rockabilly movement? Alcohol. You guys like a lot of drinking. I don't. I mean, but we're on natural though, so I don't know. Maybe other ones do like the weed. I don't know. Don't talk about drugs. Look, there's a lot of hand signals. It's like the baseball field here. Okay, what are we going to listen to next? Let's play one more song. Get I the gotta bongos. I go get my bongos. You can just lean back and grab. Oh, you want to sit back a little bit? She's okay. Tiny. You've got. Okay, if you want to see photos from the show and see what these guys look like, it's worth it. Go to our website. <laughs> go to our website. It's neworleans.com. He burned us. Yeah. It's no. Come on, you guys are great looking. Go to it'sneworleans.com or go to our Facebook or Google Plus page. It's New Orleans. They're re- they're, aren't these, isn't this a great looking band, Abby? Honestly. This I'm very like, turned on right now. These are like real rock and roll. Donnie, this is, this is like real, this is like real rock and roll people. <laughs> yeah. Right. And she's got four kids. So you'd have, to help, you'd have to help look after the kids. What are we listening to? Tango Rio. Tango Rio.
The Unnaturals. Tango Rio. How did you come up with that? Who writes the stuff in this band? Kevin Kevin doesn't yeah. want to do any talking, so we're not going to force what? him to talk. No, force him to talk, please. Yeah. Shall we force him to? Okay, yeah. Kevin, grab this mic. Come over here. Tell us. This, is his, this whole band is his baby. It's like he needs to talk more. Okay, Kevin, you need to talk more. Well, what, what is it you don't like about talking? Uh, you know, I'm just a soft-spoken person. I don't like to... I don't know, uh, you know, talk very much. It's, it's okay. Nature, Do you find that... Hang on, we just have to turn that around, so... Dig it. There you go. Do you find that you'd rather play that you can express yourself better by playing guitar than by talking? Do you prefer that? Uh, you know, that's a possibility. <laughs> that's a possibility. I, I've never really thought of it that much. Because you know. you're a great guitar player. I, I appreciate it. Aren't you? I mean, really, seriously. Uh, uh, too kind. Uh, that's a nice yeah. thing to say. Because when you're playing in a band like this, there's no place to hide. You're it. I mean, you're it. Yeah, I feel more comfortable probably with a, a guitar in front of me than. Public yeah. speaking, for example. Yeah, but I mean, you're you're in front of the stage. You, every single note has to be right. What you yeah. play, what you just played there, that song, yeah, Tango Rio, is like, it's it's got to be perfect. Every note has to be right and has to be in the right place. Otherwise, the whole song falls apart. This is true. This is very true. So you're you're. Where did you learn to play like that? Uh, you know, I started playing. Uh, uh, I used to play a lot of heavy metal, and it kind of teaches a lot of accuracy and speed and things like that. Most people probably would find that strange to think that heavy metal is accurate. It sounds just like a lot of noise. But, it, but there's an art to it. There's an art to it once you, uh, you know, really listen to it and stuff. The old heavy metal. He's yeah, like there, there oh, were some really good guitar players. And, it's like precision yeah. guitar. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So who was, who was good back in the day who you were talking about? Oh, you know, like Eddie Van Halen and guys like that. These incredible players. You know? right. but most guys were pretty competent back then. So that's so. W- so you picked up the guitar as a kid? Well, like 13, 14, something. Right. Where were you living? Here in New Orleans? Yes. yes. What, what high school did you go to? Um, I went to uh, Andrew Jackson. It's in Chalmette. In Chalmette. So I, don't know, I don't even know if it exists anymore. It might. Most people know about their high school, whether they exist or not. Why would you don't care about high school at all? Uh, can I can't. Well, no, because <laughs> Katrina wiped out most of yeah. the high school. Yeah. Well, Chalmette got yeah. completely destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know right. mine, mine exists, but it's not there anymore. It's in Mine's like totally good be. rebuilt. It's like twice the size. It right, because Slidell really got swamped. Like, right. It doesn't look nothing like it did when I went there. Right. It's huge now. So Andrew Jackson is yeah. might be there or not there. We'd have to Google it. And plus, uh, they don't have reunions? Uh, well, uh, you know, I don't know. Where do you where uh, do you live now? I only hang out with the guys from my high school. Right. Um, like, uh, I live in the Bywater. Okay. Yeah. So you turned into a hipster. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. Man. I think oh. I think I think his cowboy hat says otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I like oh, really? I like his look. It's not a hipster look. It's not a hipster look. Not a hipster no. look. What is it? I don't know. I saw a lot of hipsters last night, so I've kind of got an idea right. what the hipster look is. It's a certain <laughs> certain hairstyle, certain wear, certain jeans, certain shoes, certain I, I think you have to uh, ah, okay. grow a, a, a big long beard. You do a have beard to have with a big glasses long beard. and yeah. sandals. And, and your hair has to be shaved at the sides, but still full up top, and some kind of pseudo greaser jeans. I don't know why they brought up. that hair look back. It's a terrible look. A guy that has no hair, I can't critique anybody's hair. You so. guys <laughs> got the same hairstyle, both. You guys oh, got a shaved head. Nobody like a, gets a wrestling tag team over here. Yeah. Yeah. You could be brothers. What do you use to shave your head with, Don? I'm going to out myself. I'm a spoiled brat. Um, I found a salon around the corner, and I had a, a girl, I had a, one of the girls that works at the salon come in one night to have drinks and a cheese plate, which we do here. And she said that, she says, I have a, um, we have great cheeses. Um, she said, I have a license to do, uh, like a barber's license to do shaves, and I don't get to do them very often. And I said, well, I don't you really have shave. have a license to well, shave? Well, sure, because you have a razor blade that you kill somebody with. I mean, you can't just go oh, Okay, that's people. a good point. It's in, so, like James Bond, um, license I don't, I don't to think, in, uh, the, in especially the straight razors, the ones you see on the leather strap, the cowboy movies yeah. and the old style barbers, you can't even do that anymore. If you're grandfathered in, you might be able to, but for the most part, they don't even allow Sorry. you to do that anymore. Okay. Um, but she came in and she said, I do hot towel shaves. And I said, well, right I don't no. shave my face that often. You know, I keep a five o'clock shadow, but right. I'd love for you to shave my head. Would you want to try it? She said, absolutely. So uh, she does a hot towel shave on my head. Wow. And, and now she but shaves how my face often my do you have to get that done? It, I, go, I go once a week. Um, normally, if you really wanted to keep your head smooth, you could use a razor blade every day and shave it, or you could trim it every few days. But I find once a week, it grows back out. I, I can go about that long before I become really hideous with a giant ring in the back of my right. head. No, I was going to ask Kevin what he uses to shave his head. But the smoking he just, ban is killing him. He just mm. walked out the door. Yeah. Oh, he's going to have he a cigarette. He needs to quit yes. smoking anyways. That's true. 
Public okay. service announcement. Public here. service announcement. Okay. <laughs> quit smoking. You got to quit smoking, right? Quit Definitely. smoking or you could miss important questions about That's your right. shaving about habits. About your head yes. shaving. Yeah. Well, what does he use? Then Jen, you must know what he used to shave his head. Probably, probably like whatever you get at the dollar yeah. store. A dollar store, store razor. razor. <laughs> if it's that, if I'm it's, not kidding. If it's that close, he's using a big disposable, something like that. But those, those I think he really is. Yeah, you just keep I really you, think you, Disposables work really well because you use them and throw them away. That's what is hard on your skin is if you start using a razor over and over. But if you pay one of those Mach 3s, you pay so much, you're going to use it a few times. keep using it. It gets rough on your skin after a while what about magic shave have you ever used that like a, something to make your hair fall out like the bikini yeah stuff? yeah i have friends wow. that use it on their bodies but i've never used it on my head but i bet Ugh. it would work that but should you really give you a rash boy yeah. you can if you leave it on too long the chemical it's, reaction is tough like on your skin right oh it's, well, not, oh, it's like a kid. nair thing not a wax my legs yeah. 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 and i tried it one time i burnt it burnt me up man i said your legs up and i've tried a little kid i thought i was gonna cut myself it's pretty brutal i've tried waxing your head no 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 i've taken some dares and waxed other parts of my body so. some dares who yeah. dared you to wax other parts of your body my, my partner vincent the they are known as uh vincent and i were the law guys partners. in the restaurant business boy yeah. well they, they do some pranks do, now yeah and it, he um he he was uh when we were in law school he owned dino's which was downtown and then him and i became law partners and then his family um, built this place out now he and i run it right uh, for his family and at some point we're pretty crazy and he just i was talking to him, you know we're joking with women and we're talking about how waxing i made a comment that waxing wasn't that tough and he's like well i'll bet you a thousand dollars you can't get a brazilian a thousand I did it. dollars yeah, it's your mom. Did, you, did you collect <laughs> uh, i did so but, but but the problem was that not being and not that men don't get waxed, but not being a woman and not being advised by anybody, I probably grew my hair out you a did little it bit yourself? longer. Than, no, no, no. I had a professional do it, but I think I grew it out too long. I think you know, if you need a quarter of an inch, I grew it out two inches or something ridiculous. And what so, are we talking about? Pubic hair? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. him. Yeah, it you was, had your pubic hair waxed off, and it was two inches long. I it was long. I mean, I I haven't. You know, it was long. He looked was, like he was smuggling two boxes. It was. It was a. It was a. <laughs> It was to see what it was like. It was a funny moment. It, I wish we still had the recording. We had a recording at some you, point. It you had funny. like a video of you getting your we had, we pubic had a friend, hair waxed we had a, off. We had a friend record it. You know, we had a, it was all drawn out on a napkin. It was like my nipples, my armpits, oh, the back of my knees. Oh, no. You had to got everything my butt. It was just, it was a different part. It wasn't my arms and legs. It would have taken five hours. You had that. to do every hair, it not did, every hair on your body. Like just hundreds your, of pulls. It would, the, the bet was head to toe, but we realized it probably would, I would have blacked out from pain or from something. So at some point, we, we refined it to painful areas. Okay. And, <laughs> and there was a group of us. We had pizza. It, it's a funny day. It was a funny day. <laughs> Did that painful. piece of come back up? No, after, no. After you got at waxed, some point, at some point, would have. At some point, <laughs> you like, like the electrical, it's like an electrical zap hitting you, and after a hundred of them, you just start to get numb to the pain. It took several hundred pulls. It's like no a way. tattoo, kind it was, of. It was brutal. It was I get brutal. a tattoo any day. I ain't getting all that. No, no it, was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a one-time thing. I've never gone back. It Did you get like the that. thousand bucks? Yeah, sure. I mean, it was, yeah, but I've lost a thousand bucks, too, and we've had some funny bets. Wow. You lost a thousand. How'd you lose a thousand? Uh, I, we bet that I couldn't go my first year as a lawyer not dating a coworker. It's not illegal. Uh, it wasn't why illegal. Why don't you guys just go <laughs> bet on horses? It's not illegal. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't illegal. It wasn't inappropriate. But it was just a, like he's like, you can't be around that many new people at 26 years old and not date right. one of them. I was like, sure, I can, and I lost the bet. How many months in did you lose it? Oh, let me think. Of when I started dating that girl, see, I started working there in October, and I think February we were dating. But to be fair, and to be fair, I tried to be a lawyer about it, tried to make an argument, and this, uh, this You could was, have fired her. Well, I worked in New Orleans, and she, no, she worked in Baton Rouge, and I worked in New Orleans. <laughs> so my argument was, this was, we don't work in the same office. Oh, okay. And he, and he said, I, he One said, call, I, he, that's all. Well, he said, I'm glad you're a good attorney. He said, but that's not you know, how we're going to sell this bet. He's like, you're not going to, you know, you're turning me out of it, and you're going to pay the bet. I think you'll lose the bet. So I paid the bet. I thought, I would think you won that, wouldn't you? I mean, you're not strictly working with someone. She works in a different... She was, the, I mean, she was the office manager of Baton Rouge, and I did go to Baton Rouge, so, you know, it happens. Yeah, it's all in the terminology. Yeah. It's all yeah. in the terminology. Yeah. And, 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 and if you said work with, wor work with her, it's a, he didn't say, like, you have to work with her on right. a daily basis. And he should just did it on the slip. I know, well, we're, that's the thing is we're best friends. We tell each other everything, and we knew the spirit, the spirit of the bet was you can't be around that many new women and not try to date one of them. Well, I guess and, he and, knows and you pretty well. He, knew me pretty, he knows me better than anybody. He knows that with the easy I tell, I tell every, girl, every girl I date on my phone, he's my favorite. And then you can be second. And if you've dated me as long as I've known him, then you can be there too. You have can you be dated him? I have not <laughs> dated him. I have not dated him. We got a lot of jokes recently about well, how we could date. And I said, if I needed to marry a man to get the tax benefits, I'm doing something wrong. So, hmm. Are you we, both we, single still? Um, I mean, we don't, we're not necessarily single. We're not married. Never but, married. Okay. It's, it's funny sitting across from, from Abby because yeah, um, I'm 39. She's funny, right? Funny and four kids and married and I'm single and never married. And that's a, it's a big difference. That's a dichotomy there. Hmm. 
For four kids, is that's, that's a big deal it. right there. Yeah. yeah. Are you stopping at four? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean... Doesn't sound very definite. <laughs> I, I got some years left of productivity, You remember the first, right? But, uh, can't say definite the first one when she said well, happened. <laughs> <laughs> could you get to five could you imagine bringing up five kids i don't know for now i'm not focusing on reproduction i, I don't what know. are you focusing on uh just trying to be present in the moment you know hey nice yeah i see it says here that you're going back to school to do a uh, course in hospitality yeah that's right um i mean in tourism management um i really like the city of new orleans i actually trained to be a tour guide last year and oh. uh i got my license finally there was this weird bureaucratic hold up with like background checks at city hall like they they have background checks like you're uh you know gonna be a cia agent or something what are they because you that you have to check that you're an okay person to walk around the french quarter and I point guess. out yeah sites and, and lie about you know uh, yeah ghost Andrew happenings Jackson. basically yeah and yeah. how do they uh, what kind of person gets knocked back for that I'd like to know well it wasn't me it was they weren't issuing any new licenses um, because uh, it was a low priority thing with the FBI so they said originally <laughs> yeah okay come on okay that, that's ridiculous the FBI is not spending time the Federal Bureau of Investigations is not looking into that's the background that's what they told me oh I that's don't know. bullshit <laughs> they're not looking at the backgrounds of tour guide in a small town yeah surely small town well how big are we compared to the rest of the city very very America? small I guess yeah. I don't know how many people in Philadelphia compared to New Orleans 10 20 yeah. times how many America? Jews in Philadelphia <laughs> how many Jews I don't yeah. know there um, might be more Jews in Philadelphia than the total populace of New Orleans greater New Orleans area yeah I'm yeah. sure the FBI is not looking at that's what they told you well the, the back yeah the background <laughs> checks we're going through that. Oh, that's I don't, ridiculous. I don't of know course why. they're not. Might be a homeland thing because we're a port. You <laughs> oh. never know. Being a port city, being tourism, being homeland. Well, I could the way imagine we are that maybe days. if you were the concierge at a hotel, even they might want to know about your background check. But a tour guide on the street? Yeah, I don't know why. But uh, you could lead someone down a blind alley, I guess, and shoot. You know, them. we're a very bureaucratic yeah, government, but right? A gang of them. Extremely like bureaucratic government. You. What in, in New Orleans in general? In the no, in the United States. In the United States. Everywhere we're very bureaucratic. There's well, a department for everything. Everybody's got to have a job. Everybody's got to have a job. There you go. Anyway, Kevin, smoking bowls, you walked out of the room right when I was <laughs> going to ask you. Oh, yes. Pull over this. Go ahead. What do you use to shave your head with? We'll see if uh, they were right. Uh, usually, usually when I do my face, I just take this razor and bam, knock it out. You know? And they just keep going on your <laughs> head. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what Disposables or the Mach 3s? Uh, disposable. See? Told you disposable. Okay, yeah, there you go. Everyone was right. right. I my head. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tried magic shave? That was my next question. Like uh, nair. I'm, I'm not sure what that is. Something makes your hair so fall like out, a, like a nair. Yeah. Uh, Burning your skin. Like yeah, chemical, yeah, chemical. Yeah, chemical yeah, you get chemical, chemical burn. burns from that stuff, I think. So. No, no one tries that. Okay, all right. No. <laughs> Just checking. Hey, we're going to get the hell out of here in one minute. What have I forgotten to ask? Anything? Need to talk about Creepy Fest. Creepy Fest. I don't know anything about Creepy Fest. What is it? Creepy Fest is a four-day... It's, it's a festival, mostly punk and metal and hardcore. It's uh, kind of like a celebration of the underground. So it's o uh, this year it's over nine venues. There's over 40 bands playing from uh, Texas, Tennessee, Louisiana, Mississippi. I don't know where else. I'd have to look it up. And what dates is it? It starts tonight at Bank Street Bar. Tonight. And okay, so if you're listening to, to this. It. But we are so playing Saturday night at Rare Form. So Saturday night, the what? Is that the 17th of July or yes. 18th of July? 18th, 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 18th of, of July. July. In case you listen to this, it's 2015. Yes. Yeah, people listen, yes, yes, yes. People listen to these podcasts. But it is the seventh annual, <laughs> so if you're listening to this next year, it might be going on about okay, the Okay, so same check time, it out at so. Creepy Fest. If you haven't to listen yeah. to it this weekend, it's the weekend of the 18th and 19th of July 2015. Yes. And you can find it at creepyfest.com or something? Well, if you go to Facebook and search for Creepy Fest, there's a, okay. a Facebook page, there's an event page, and there's like individual event pages for uh, I some thought of I'd, different shows. I thought I'd heard of everything, but I'd never heard of Creepy Fest. I have I've, not either. I've heard of all sorts of festivals, oyster yeah. festivals. And it's 7th Annual. And uh, this, there's annual even a, the way it started was because uh, my boyfriend, actually Bill Hines, he, works, uh, he, he makes movies with Terror Optics. And they were going to do a, a release party for the soundtrack to a movie, a short film called Creepy Dean that came with a, a disc that had the, the short film, a couple other short films and music videos on it. That's why it's Creepy Fest for Creepy Dean. Creepy Dean, okay. Yeah, but it wound up becoming like a, a, a bigger thing than he expected, and then everybody loved it. He kept, kept it going, but he kept the name. 
So oh, it's creepy cool. fest. So it's your boyfriend is at the helm of this yes. creepy fest. And okay, and Bill Hines. Helping. So he's I in lots of bands. Everybody. He's in lots of bands. He's a musician. This well. year he's only yes. got four bands playing that he's in. What four bands he's is he He's had in? like six before in previous years. He's in what? the Paul Bearers. The Paul he's in Bearers. Dummy Dumpster. <laughs> Okay. He's in Maggot Sandwich, which I'm also Maggot in. Sandwich. Maggot yes. Sandwich. We're this having our record release party Friday night. You're in on Maggot Sandwich. Congratulations. Too. Yes. So that's romantic. That were, yeah, and remember I said those little side sandwich. projects. Yeah. 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 It's magic. <laughs> do you serve that here at Wayfair? <laughs> we do not. We serve great sandwiches. It could be a delicacy in some sandwich. countries. You don't know. It could be. Who came up with the name Maggot Sandwich? Uh, it's actually um, a Florida hardcore band from the 80s, and Vic Chaos is the uh, last original member, and he lives here now. Okay. So he needed a new rhythm section. Uh, we need to have it. you guys on Happy Hour. <laughs> Maggot Sandwich with Vic Chaos and the two of them. Is this the three of you in it? Or it's is just it? three, yeah. Oh, you have to come back on with that Maggot Sandwich band. Don't <laughs> I, I, I can't I imagine. I don't know the, that's going to go well. Uh, the the Maggot college. Sandwich acoustic set. Yeah, that's. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really fast. Yeah. It's like thrash, sort of. Simple but tourist style. It's uh, it's like it's hardcore, hardcore punk. punk. And like, yeah, oh, it's hardcore punk. punk. Okay. Punk, yeah, it's like punk. Old school hardcore, hardcore punk. punk. Old school. Did you, before you start selling did you have a, punk. Did you punk. ever see the review? Maggot sandwich, shit sandwich. What? <laughs> that's from Spinal Tap. From Spinal Tap. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and really? Then yeah. Yes, that's a line of Spinal Tap. How do I not remember that? Mm. I don't know. Uh, but Kevin Bowles yeah, knows it. Oh, of course he would know. It, yeah, is great, it. it is a great movie. Great so movie yeah, Kevin Zamp goes to 11. Yeah. Goes up to 11. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's true. So Creepy Fest is uh, the weekend of the 19th of, 18th to 19th of July, 2015. It's and next year, starting that's to the starting this tonight. Weekend. It's always this the middle weekend, of July. Yes. Every, Every year it is the middle of July. <laughs> the middle of July, okay. Every year. Nice, to, uh, nice time for a festival, nice and cool. Okay. So Creepy Fest is you guys. Kevin, did I forget to mention anything you want to say? Before uh, we get out of here, let's talk Saturday, about. Yeah, you we mentioned just it did again. Say that. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. like you could mention that we're playing next weekend okay. at Rare Form on Friday and at Bank, Bank Street, Street Bar on Saturday. Saturday. Okay, so if we you could mention that. We can mention that. Where <laughs> could we find you? Are you? Is it the Unnaturals? Are you on? We're on ReverbNation.com, Facebook. Okay. We're on Bandcamp, and we're on. Uh, what's that other one? Oh, we got a playlist on YouTube, so you can find yeah. everything in okay. one spot. Okay, and we have a link to you guys on our website. It's New Almost. Awesome, great. As well. Thank you. Okay. Um, what, Donnie, what were you going to say before oh, I I just here? wanted Something to say we love having set. happy hour here. Hey, and, thanks. Uh, we if love you're, it too. If you've never been to Wayfair, please come check us out. We have a great happy hour every day from 4 to 7 with food and drink specials. If you're one of our loyal customers, the big change that we're trying to get the word out about is we're doing brunch now on Friday. I'm oh. sorry. Excuse me. On Saturday and Sunday oh. um, from 11 to 3. I think brunch is a breakfast and brunch is a, a big meal in New Orleans. I think people actually love to go out for that. And we redid the whole menu. Uh, we have quite a few new items. We have a, our take on a Benedict with a homemade cornbread and a pulled pork and a uh, tasso cream sauce. We have uh, our French toast. We have a classic breakfast. We have a savory quiche, which is something different. We have a common combination between a quiche and a bread pudding. So um, complete overhaul to the menu. We put out all new Whoa. menus. you got to come try the brunch. It was God really well. damn it, we do. And we're only on the second <laughs> week. It was I wish that I wouldn't have ate before I, I came here. I, I didn't know you had food. <laughs> I didn't well, eat. the food is amazing, but the brunch is something really new and exciting. It's, this will. We've only done it one week. This will be our second weekend coming up. Okay. Um, so now I'm kind of ready to be run over with business. I was a little trepidatious last weekend. Didn't want to get crushed, but we're ready to do it this weekend. And uh, it was very well received. Um, everybody came in and enjoyed it, so we'd love to have you guys come in and try. Oh, this sounds great. I would love to try that. It's also great we can come and have brunch and then go to Creepy Fest. Well, the other uh, way around. I love it. I love <laughs> it. There you go. Love Struggle it. in from Creepy Fest and have brunch. Donnie, that sounds so great here. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, we've had a great time being here. Uh, at, at, uh, we've enjoyed having you guys there. I it's come a lot in of fun and, coming Yeah, and, and it's when I come into work usually in the afternoons to close up the place for the night, and I get to hear these great bands playing. Yeah. You know, I never knew this type of music until they played it. I'm like, wow, apparently I like this kind of music, and I didn't know it. Now, who so knew? So it's very cool. That's what we do it for. With you can come see us play at the Creepy Fest. I, if I ever don't have to be here seven days a week, I should definitely come check we it out. We don't play till okay. 12 o'clock at night. That's the, the love of All New right. Orleans late sets. That's the Unnaturals. Kevin Balls on guitar, Jen A on bass, and Alana Caruso on drums. Thank thanks. you for having us. Thanks for being here. Thanks too to Abby Mannix, who's the funniest woman in uh, on Fret Street. Easy, uh, right? Yes. Funny mom <laughs> and humble. Are you going to be like a superstar screenwriter like your uncle? Time will tell. Are you writing anything? Yes, I'm writing um, sketches and, and we're filming them. We're uh, going to have them online soon. Uh, where yeah. can we find them? Um, they'll be on nolacomedy.com. That's the La Nui website. 
nolacomedy.com okay mm -hmm. alright and when when you guys come back on with Maggot Sandwich I'm gonna <laughs> gentlemen I'm gonna ask you about that giant tattoo on your back oh, oh yeah it's pretty cool. Look at that. Wow. Oh, She's wow. got some nice wings. Very nice. Wings. Oh, my God. Look at that. That is super cool. She's got cool. a set of wings. Randy cool. Muller. Wings Randy Muller at Eye Candy Tattoos. It's uh, Eye Candy Tattoo. Wow. An angel uh, pinup girl and a double doll, and they're hanging out together, and the angel's even dressed a little slutty, and she's smoking cigarettes, and her wings are all singed and everything. Very cool. That is great. And it's on your back, though, so you get to see that very much yourself. She look at it in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Everybody, Basically. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Grant. Thank the you. Unnaturals, thank Donnie you. Rose, thank Abby Maddox. Bye. That's our happy hour for this week. Our show is produced by Graham DuPonte, our associate producer and technical director is Chris Kehoe. Christian Unruh is our music director and our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show, you can drop us a line. Our address is on our website where you can also check out many other happy hours as well as some other shows we make here. Out to lunch with Peter Raschuti live from Commander's Palace Mindset with psychiatrist Dr. Nick Pajic, true to the game with Chris True. Midnight Menu Plus One with Margot Moss and the man who ate New Orleans, Ray Canada, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker. Milo's Music Power with Kim Vu and the revolutionary new way to buy a house in New Orleans, Unlisted Nola. You can keep up with us on Facebook, on Twitter, and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our Facebook and Google Plus pages. Those photos are taken today by the lovely Alison Moon right over there. If you listen to this show on iTunes or Stitcher or some other podcast app that you prefer, thank you for subscribing to us. Do one thing for me. Take one moment to rate and review us. That helps other people find us. It really does. Our show is recorded live today at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street where you can come and get brunch on Saturday and Sunday and where they also put fine dining into a sandwich and fine booze into a glass and have a three-hour happy hour every day. Happy Hour is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com. If you're looking for Andrew Duhon, he's on tour in Europe. You can find out where exactly at andrewduhon.com. Thanks for joining us. I'm Grant Morris. I'll see you back here next week at Wayfair on Happy Hour. Let's be honest, there are tons of ways to send money back home, and every company promises me the same things, good rates and safe transfers. That's why it can be overwhelming to choose a new way to send money. I switched to Remitly because I can track my money every step of the way, which means I know exactly when my mom will get her money. And with their extensive payment network, my mom can receive her money in a way that is more convenient and safe for her. You should check it out. Go to Remitly.com or download their app to get started. Remitly Inc. is a licensed money transmitter by the state of New York, California, Massachusetts, and other states.